Home Scientists. My name is Dr. Susan, an instructor from our Massachusetts office. And today, I'm going to be showing you a fun and colorful experiment you can do with ingredients you already have around the house. We are going to learn about acids, bases, and natural pH indicators. You've probably heard of acids before, and you may have even drunk acidic solutions before, like lemonade. Have you ever had extreme sour warheads candy? Ever wondered why they're so sour? They're covered in sugar mixed with malic acid, which is also found in green apples, but it's concentrated, so it's very, very sour. And why is soap so slippery? Why do pancakes or donuts taste yucky if you add too much baking soda for the recipe? Have you ever accidentally gotten a bitter mouthful of shampoo in the bath? It's because soap and baking soda are both bases. Why would kids care about acids and bases? Well, knowing what's acidic and basic can help you decide what foods might be tasty and refreshing, or which household chemicals require extra caution, or even to maintain the water in your backyard pool or your fish tank. At the end of this lesson, I'll explain what makes things acidic or basic in more detail. But first, a demo. Let's get started with these mystery liquids. Is there any way to tell the difference between an acid and a base just by looking at them? What do you think? I'm gonna put on my safety goggles for this first experiment here. Watch closely. What just happened here? What I didn't tell you is that I had added a special chemical called a pH indicator to both these liquids. The same chemical has been added to both cups, but in one cup, it turned red, and in the other, it turned green. One cup had vinegar in it, that's an acid, and the other cup had household ammonia, like the kind used to clean windows, and that's a base. Is there a way to measure how acidic or basic something is? Yes, you can use a pH scale. pH is a scale to measure acidity, like a ruler measures length. The change in colors tell you how acidic or basic something is. Things that are very acidic are on one end of a pH scale, and their pH is going to be a low number, from one up to just below seven. Things that are neither acidic nor basic are called neutral, like water, and the pH will be seven. Anything which is basic is on the other end of the pH scale and will have a pH greater than seven and all the way up to 14. For our experiment today, we're going to search through our pantry, our fridge, and under the kitchen sink for liquids whose pH you can test. Chemists use special paper called pH strips, but we're going to use our homemade color indicator that's brewed from red cabbage. Before you try the experiment we're going to do today, make sure to get the permission of an adult in your home. The best place to do it is in your kitchen because it can get a bit messy. Also, here at Science from Scientists, we always tell our students never to eat or drink the science. Don't eat the science today. Because these are common household materials, though, you can safely pour them down the sink once you're done. I'm going to be wearing eye protection for this experiment, and it's a good idea for you, too. If you don't have your own goggles at home, you can wear sunglasses in a pinch. it's okay. At a minimum, see if you can test the pH of tap water, baking soda, vinegar, and Windex or household ammonia. Please ask an adult to pour the Windex or ammonia for you. Let's measure out a tablespoon of each liquid. You're going to want to wash the tablespoon off after you measure each one so you don't contaminate the next one because that would change its pH. I'm going to put on my protective eyewear now. Now, I'm going to add one half a teaspoon of my homemade red cabbage pH color indicator to each cup 
and I'm going to gently swirl them around. Now, I'm going to arrange these household liquids in order from most acidic to most basic. I'm going to be referring to a handy chart which shows me what happens to red cabbage juice when it's mixed with chemicals of different pHs. So, what were my results? Let's take a look. For most acidic, we've got lemon juice with the pH of between two and three. Then we've got vinegar, which has a pH of 2.4. Seltzer has a pH of three. Coffee has a pH of five. You might notice that this one's so dark, it didn't really change color so well. We've got regular tap water, should have a pH of around seven. Baking soda has a pH of between eight and nine. Foaming hand soap has a, it's supposed to have a pH of around nine, but you might notice here it's a lovely lavender color. So I think that this hand soap is a little more acidic than it is basic. So I'm going to put it right here next to the coffee. And lastly, we've got our Windex with a pH of 10.7. Let's explain these results. So what is an acid and what is a base? Well, water is made of two hydrogen atoms connected to one oxygen atom. Water can be chemically split into two parts called ions. One hydrogen ion made from one hydrogen and one hydroxide ion made from one hydrogen connected to one oxygen. Liquids with lots of extra hydrogen ions are acids. If they have a lot of extra hydroxide ions, they're bases. So let's review. Scientists use color changing universal pH indicators to help them figure out the properties of acids and bases. And you can make your own natural pH indicators, which also change color when they react with hydrogen or hydroxide ions or liquids, like you did today. Last, you probably already know what happens when you mix vinegar with baking soda. But what happens when you mix vinegar, baking soda, and a natural pH indicator? Let's see. Vinegar neutralizes baking soda, so you should end up with a liquid whose pH is closer to that of water, around 7. Here's our neutralized liquid, and here's water. Thanks for joining me for Science and Scientists Experiment Monday. What results did you get? We would love to see your work, and we might share your pictures on social media. If you're interested, please fill out the Google Form link at the end of this video. See you later.